What's up guys, it's Flamon from Flamon Miniatures and today I have for you the first video about painting and Mordor Orc from Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. But before I go to the video, I would like to ask you to hit that subscribe button below in order to don't miss the latest videos. Okay, so on today's video tutorial, I cover the topics about painting non-metallics on an orc and his red clothing. It's, uh, I think it's a very useful video and I hope that you will agree with me. And I actually hope that I will be able to finish an entire video, an entire miniature a bit quicker, but as it turned out, I needed a bit more time, so because of that, uh, this tutorial will be in two parts. Today is the first part, and in a few days I will upload the second part, on which I will finish his paint his face, his hair, and the rest of his clothing. But yeah, I think that today's video tutorial is actually pretty informative too, and I hope that you will have fun with it, and learn something from it, and you will enjoy it. So, okay, let's get to the video. Okay, guys, so before I start painting the miniature, I need to present to you exactly how I'm working with my paintbrush. And the thing is that I'm working with it just like with a pencil. When you want to paint something with pencil, when you want to create shadows with pencil, you first, uh, touch the surface of the paper that you are drawing on strongly, then you are leaving strong uh, color. And then when you start to touch the paper more and more delicate until you barely scratch the surface, you start leaving less and smaller and smaller amount of ink from the pencil. So the thing works the same with my paintbrush. But yeah, first I soak it in uh, in paint. Then I try to sharpen it, just like you saw it on on a piece of paper, because I don't want to have too much paint on it. And then I do the same thing that I just did with my pencil. So I start with touching the surface of the miniature like stronger, and later I try to barely scratch the surface until I can really barely scratch it. Right now what you can see is what's happening on a piece of paper. So of course painting on a piece of paper looks different because paper absorbs the paint while mm, on a miniature the paint stays on it until it dries out. And also this is white color so it looks different. But this is basically what I'm doing. The further I go from a space that I want to be more colored, the less I touch the surface with, with the tip of my brush. And thanks to that, I'm leaving, well, I'm leaving smaller amount of paint. And thanks to that, uh, this small amount of paint is less and less visible. And because of that, I'm creating smooth transitions because they are half transparent tiny stripes that uh, you need to have more of them in order to create transition. And now I uh, I poured paint on my uh, wet paint. Oh my God, I forgot the name. Um, if you're not if you are new here, then the thing is that I often forget really basic names of things. It's happening uh, just because. And yeah, so it's my wet palette. Oh yeah, okay. So I poured paint on my wet palette. And as you can see, it's black, black gray, uh, London gray, and blue gray pale. So now the first thing I do I did is that I paint scales of this armor 
separately with black gray paint. This is the basic color that I will use for it because I consider that this is made of steel. Of course, you can paint it with different colors and create different ideas for this part of armor. It can be copper, for example. And now I'm mixing black paint with black gray paint. This is actually one of my favorite paints ever because it's like brighter black. You know, black is black and black gray is gray. And I always thought that it would be great to have a mid-tone between these two because when you are looking on black objects, we have places that are, well, between these. They are not completely black and they are not gray either. So we need something different. So yeah, it's like 60% of black to 50 uh, to 40% of black gray. And I'm painting with it uh, every every part of the armor that's supposed to be made of steel or, or iron. I don't know exactly what orcs use for their armors. So yeah. And now it was uh, chocolate brown. That looks exactly the same like burnt amber. So I use these colors from time to time uh, for painting dark brown elements like in this case mm, wood that works as a base for the shield as you can see on the back of the shield we, we've got this very nice structure of wood and of course i'm painting these details separately because i like my miniatures to be and i don't know if there is a word for it in english but in my language there is a word that we call things readable and when things are readable it means that they are you clearly see what is where you don't have any problems with understanding uh, where things start when they end they are clearly um, in this case painted so I, it's also aesthetics that I absorbed from the comic books from the 90s and I really like it, like strong shadows, sharp edges, I can clearly see where one detail starts and another ends and this is what I like and this is what I'm painting right now. I'm still to this day not sure what is this what I'm painting right now. I uh, assume that this is some kind of... Uh, mm, letter with scales oh my god could this be like scales from a cave troll i always assumed that this is some kind of a letter from from some kind of an animal that have scales on it but now when i'm looking at it is this a cave troll skin or in this in this case uh, mordor troll mm, skin could it be in that case uh, i guess i should paint it in rather gray colors but i'm not sure did anyone ever explain what what this shield is made of okay so now i'm as you can see highlighting the scales with neutral gray paint and the idea is that the front of the miniature is strong is illuminated in a stronger way than its sides so i want to have a one reflecting point brighter point in the middle of the miniature this means that I want the scales in the middle of the armor to be to be brighter than on its side. So as you can see now, while I painted scales on the in the middle entirely, now I'm painting plenty of stripes. I'm trying to be as, as chaotic as I can in order to create kind of a transition between between these colors. And now once again, I make with blue gray pale. Uh, these scales that are in the middle like entirely but when I will come to the sides I will try to make uh, as you can already see create uh, some 
scratches that represent that the light is trans transitioning from the middle into the a bit sh more shaded areas on the side. So yeah, I'm already painting scratches, just like you saw on the beginning of the video. Uh, once again, imagine that you are um, painting shadows with a pencil or a, or a pen. So plenty of very chaotic scratches. And the further the further I go, the more I go leave the center of the miniature, the more uh, gentle are touches of my brush. So I leave small amount of paint. Thanks to that, I create an illusion of color transition. And because this is org, I don't have to make anything smooth, so I can work quicker and create these scratches. And now, very interesting part of the armor is leg armor. So first, I I want them to be darker. So I first marked a reflection with black gray paint. Everything I I'm actually painting the same way. It's like I paint plenty of scratches and. The further I go away from from the place where I want the color to reflect, the the more gentle movements I make. And yeah, I just as you can see now I highlight this place with blue gray pale, which is the brightest color that I use. But as you can see in the opposite to the to the scales on the scale armor, I use very little of it because I want to have just a small reflection on the bottom. But top edge of the leg armor needs to be illuminated with brighter color. In this case, I start with neutral gray because it's it's facing a source of light. So it has to be brighter. And now another reflection on the bottom. Once again, black gray, then neutral gray, then a tiny, tiny, uh, oh yeah. In the meantime, I created a mixture of uh, black gray and neutral gray because I felt a need to have a color that is in between these two. And I think it works really nice. And uh, thanks to this, yeah, there I made a reflection that is a bit darker than on the first part. And now mm, I'm making chaotic lines and dots on the top edge of this leg armor. And these are representing uh, every kind of chippings and dents on the armor and places where light reflects on them. So here once again, black gray. It's important to keep in mind that if the miniature is illuminated from above, then we need still to uh, still need to have reflections on the bottom, but they need to work in a bit different way than those that are located on the top. They need to be a bit darker and maybe just they should be also smaller because this part of armor will still reflect the light, but in a bit different way because it's not illuminated data. It's not illuminated directly. It's working with light that already reflected from other objects. So it's supposed to be darker. And I also think that when we are painting uh, orcs, it's good to have darker armors with rust on them as the opposite for the kingdoms of men. Like when you are painting warrior, a warrior, of Minas Tirith. I think it's better to make a nice shiny armor to represent that uh, humans are not as slabs as orcs are. It's also a very important difference between the, these two races. And it also looks more interesting on the battlefield. But as you can see, everything I paint, I paint with creating these tiny scratches. So at this point, I decided to slow down video a little bit. So this is once again a normal speed. Just to remind you that I cannot move my brush this fast. And now the same, the same thing. And if you want to know where to place reflections on, on your sword, then the answer is I don't know. Just try to place them like anywhere and make a darker space between two reflections. You can make two, three reflections, but you can make one reflection and just 
create a nice contrast, reflection and rust and it will be okay. And this side of the sword mm, is more problematic because it's uh, actually the position of his hand is presenting it that the, the side of the sword is facing earth. So the top edge of it will be illuminated directly not not side that I'm painting right now so sides should be darker and also this side of uh, I guess scimitar uh, don't have this side sharp I mean you could probably polish it but if you are an orc from Mordor then you probably don't care for stuff like this so it will most definitely be dark rusty and fill it with scratches this is this is the the look that i'm going for and now yeah the main reflection with blue gray pale and as you can see these reflections look like reflections while blue gray, blue gray pale paint isn't actually a very bright paint it is bright gray but not very bright and the thing is that when we keep the an entire miniature in dark colors and the rest of it will be also very dark what is my goal because i think that this style suits uh, orcs much better than anything else let's keep bright colors for elves or humans or easterlings and then blue gray pale is enough for reflection for you it, it just works nice so yeah, this is uh, another side of the scimitar. It's in a different position, so it should be illuminated in a brighter way. So I will do that. But first, reflection on the on the armor on the hand. So when you are painting reflection, it's important to create sudden reflection. You cannot go uh, gradually. Gradually, it's not the right word. You cannot gently go from dark to bright because then it will look like plastic you want to create reflection and when you create reflection reflections are rather sudden they can cover bigger areas but they do not go gently it's like shadow shadow bam reflection and this is what i'm trying to do now as you can see first i created lines for this reflection now i'm trying to gently create dots and stripes around it in order to make it blend with the rest of the armor to create sudden reflection and also a few stripes that represent scratches on the surface of the armor that I think then give a bit of re realistic look to it I think it looks nice our brain already sees this as more realistic and now I'm once again I'm just trying to be chaotic it's you want to have metallic reflections on your sword, you just need shadows and reflections. It's important to have both of them, but you don't need to go too crazy. Sometimes people go from basically white reflection to black shadow. It's this is too much. Now, as you can see, the brightest co the darkest color here is black gray. And the brightest is blue gray pale, and it will still look metallic. Of course, it will look a bit matte, but I want this to look matte because, like I mentioned before, this is the part of Semitar that nobody would rather polish if they were orc. So I want this to look like a matte metal. I think that if we would have any really sharp polished edge, it would be on the bottom because this is the edge that you use for cutting. Actually, this also looks like a very big machete, so I don't know. Maybe this is a machete, but machete would still have only the bottom mm, this sharp edge uh, polished. Okay, so more stripes with a blue gray pair. When, over the time, I learned that it's better to cre just create um, scratches with bright color instead of also with dark color that would Im represent dents i mean it is the best to use different colors f 
for different places on the armor, like painting scratches on more shaded area. For this task you should use a bit darker color and for brighter, of course, brighter colors for scratches. And painting dense is also cool, but like I mentioned before, I want these tutorials to be a bit quicker. I want them to present pretty decent effect in a shorter period of time. I think I will also make a longer tutorial about painting an orc in a really cool level. It will of course take me probably three times more time to finish it, but maybe it will be interested, interesting experiment. But so far my goal is to make it a bit quicker. Now, as you can see, I mixed mm, flat brown with silver gray in order to make the top edges of the scales more visible. There is a few ways how you can uh, paint these edges to make them more visible, but right now I'm just choosing the easy and quick one because, like I said, this is supposed to be a rather quick tutorial and I already see that I will need more time than I expected for finishing this orc, but not very... it won't be very long. For me it's still very quick and right now I was working in a speed that I find very satisfying and comfortable, so I enjoy this process. So I think that everything is alright, because, like I mentioned many times, painting miniature is all about giving you fun, except, of course, for the moments when you are a player and you need to paint an army for a tournament, then it's, I guess, uh, just a torment, when you have, like, I don't know, 50 orcs to paint in a, in a week, then it's, then it's not, not so much fun. Then. I guess I, I won't be able to help you. This, what I am presenting, is rather about... a oh, very important thing. Change the position of the miniature from time to time and keep it in position that is comfortable for you to work with your wrist. You need to have comfortable access to details on a miniature, so sometimes change its position just like I did, in order to have a better access to some of the scales. And now I'm painting the steel element on the shield with black-gray. I, I want these details to be darker than the sword or the armor, because I imagine that they would be made by the blacksmith in a bit different way. Uh, it's just supposed to hold all the pieces together and I guess make the shield also a bit stronger so there is no need for any kind of polishing it. So I can make it, uh, so I can make these steel elements or iron elements, I don't know how they are working in model, uh, a bit darker. I, I think it will simply suit it and like I said, I want this orc to be painted in rather dark color, so, so that's what my goal will be in there. And I think it will be also very interesting for you to see that you can still make non-metallic effects using a very limited palette, especially considering the brightness of things that I will use. So yeah, now I'm uh, obviously highlighting a few edges on the leg armor on the back because they are still reflective. Now, uh, once again, very chaotic movements of my brush over the over the steel elements on the shield. You just try to be chaotic. Release the kraken inside of you. Paint straps, stripes, paint dots. Don't think too much about them. Think about that you want to highlight this, but not too well. Because when you will be this unreleased chaos 
that is just making stripes and dots, then you will create a chaotic pattern and later you can work on this pattern. You can make some of these reflections that you paint in this step brighter and this will look surprisingly um, realistic. I, I work with that all the time. I try to don't think at all, create some kind of structure while not thinking about it and later make it work. Mm, highlight these places that look like they are more convex. And I have them now. Okay, so once again, I'm mixing neutral gray with black gray. And this is the first color that I use. And you can see, there it is. I'm now highlighting the things that I created in my chaotic process. This is rather flat surface in the terms of sculpting and I created dances on it. Uh, dents, dents on it. And now I follow these patterns that I created and this allows me to make it look more worn out or made in a way that that hammer was hitting these places, creating structures on them and it makes it look more realistic in my opinion. So yeah, now more of the same. And now I'm gently highlighting the edges of the armor in the same manner like before. Chaos, chaos is what I'm trying to achieve. Chaos looks realistic. In case if you are wondering this, what you can see now is uh, speeded up to the point where it's three times quicker than the real process of painting. Um, that that's just an interesting detail to say. And yeah, highlights, highlights everywhere. And now I'm highlighting everything once again, this time with neutral gray paint. And so it's another level of highlighting. As you can see, when I'm using just these very similar tonations, it starts to look a bit metallic because I'm following the rules that reflections are appearing sudden. Of course, this type of metal is more matte than other types of metal because this was never, never supposed to be polished. But it still doesn't mean that we cannot create strong contrast here and there. Um, yeah, it's also the matter of uh, experience. After uh, some time, you, you just start to feel when there is too much uh, contrast and when it's, it's okay. It comes also when you're watching paintings, stuff like this things that other people created. It's good to learn from other people's knowledge. Oh, and it's actually pretty hard to narrate the video when I do the same thing for a bit longer period of time. So, I would like to say some kind of a joke, but I don't, I don't feel comfortable enough to don't make mistakes in English. That would make it sound stupid. But here is a Finally, something new. So I'm painting another reflections with blue gray pale. So as you can see, I'm being very chaotic. I'm trying not to think at all when I'm painting this. And when I'm painting this, now I'm painting reflections that would appear on the chipping and dents on and other small distractions on, on the shield. When I'm painting this, 
dots and stripes. Like I said, I'm trying not to create any logical pattern. Except for, the ta for that, I need to highlight these edges that are on top. So in this case, I will later also illuminate that, illuminate the edges on the on these vertical uh, steel stripes that I left now. I just painted this horizontal. So what it presents is light reflections, and thanks to this, uh, it looks like if the metal that it's made of is dark, but if you hit it with something, then you can get to a um, normal metal that is that it's made of and it's reflective so it it makes it look more realistic while it keeps it also in dark donations it's very useful technique that i learned i don't know when but i like to use it i i really like to use it but usually i'm painting very nice smooth contrastful colorful miniatures so i i'm not using it but battle damage is very interesting thing to paint just the thing is that it's also time consuming as you can see i spend on it a bit of time but i think that it makes the orc look more realistic and this is in different color black black red it's a it's a new paint that i just bought because I kept using uh, Andrea red paint set that is absolutely great but I heard that it's not easy to buy it uh, everywhere I got mine from Cool Mini or Not as a gift many years ago so I don't even know if it's hard or not to get it anymore it was for a, from a contest about painting a miniature just in blacks and whites. Really cool contest. Uh, teaches you a lot about where to place lights and shadows. Sometimes colors can be very distractful. So now what I'm doing, I'm painting uh, his cloth. This what he is wearing with it and i'm leaving uh, black base color only in the darkest darkest places like really edges on below below the details but i want this black gray to be the the base color because i don't want to have too much contrast on a cloth that is uh, probably made of linen I don't think that orcs could have cotton fields and make clothes made of cotton or anything better. So I assume that this is linen. So yeah, anyway, that's just, just I shouldn't have too much contrast on it because uh, thanks to that, it will look more realistic. And also if you will make small contrast on, on cloth, clothes then uh, non-metallics will look more realistic also and they will look different because they will be very contrastful with sudden reflections so this here I want to create something completely different something rather flat matte and painted in a graduation way So yeah, there's a lot of just painting. As you can see, covering of this paint is not the strongest. So I had to apply a lot of layers. So yeah, I, yeah, maybe more music for you for this moment. And I will start going when I start working on something different.
Okay, so now I think that it's a good idea to highlight bottom parts of these scales. But for this I need a color that will be brighter, but just a little bit brighter because the edges are top edges are really reflecting light and bottoms are supposed to be brighter just because uh, space below the reflection the top reflection is supposed to be the darkest because it's neighboring the reflection of light so our eye will see this as darker color and the further we go from the reflection the brighter color can be of course depending on what the material what is the material that we are painting so uh, i'm now gently highlighting this with a mixture of flat brown and silver gray and i like to highlight these colors with silver gray because it's a bit beige color and thanks to that the effects are less somehow the colors I, I just feel that they look nicer when I highlight it with silver gray while when I'm highlighting things with white they became mm, a bit paler okay so this is how the scales look now uh, pure black gray oh yeah so I decided to paint this uh, cloth cloth this part of his clothing uh, as if that would be black so first I marked the reflection with uh, black gray then I painted now I'm highlighting this black gray places with neutral gray and before that I painted top parts that's supposed to be illuminated but are not reflecting the light directly with a mixture of black gray and black paint and now I'm trying to create smooth transitions between these neutral gray places and black gray black mixtures reflections yeah so I left it like this it's a bit risky because um this uh, cloth is cut cloth close it's it's funny how I forgot how how to pronounce this word so it's neighboring with a with a arm or on his arm and it makes it a bit risky to paint it as if that would be black because it can look a bit like it's made of metal because of this but I, I want to risk this because uh, which color I'm using now burnt red okay so it's another so I don't want uh, so I just want the miniature to look dark, so I want him to have black clothes, uh, clothes as, as well as this red, so I have to take this risk. So this was burnt red, so it's just a little bit brighter than, than dark, dark, black, black red, dark red. I, I cannot stop it because I'm of the matter of recording. So I'm just highlighting the cloth a little bit at this point, just a little bit. Um, once again, it's mm, I'm painting in a chaotic way. I'm painting dots and stripes everywhere. Thanks to this, I'm creating structure on the miniature. And it's still very dark color.
Okay, here it is. The brighter color, flat red. Yeah, it's uh, it's flat. It's rather pale color, and I'm highlighting with the glow. So um, it's hard to explain exactly which parts I'm highlighting. I'm just highlighting these that are uh, that are facing the source of light that I of course have in my mind, imagining when I, how I'm painting the miniature. So I'm uh, painting the convex and very concave elements that are facing the source of light, so it could reflect the light with its flat surface. It's well, but, but I will maybe make another video about this. This this comes with time and understanding just how light works. And the best way for learning at this point is definitely uh, just copying other people's work. You can, of course, copy my work. This is what I'm, why I'm doing this. So yeah, now I'm, as you can see, still everything that I'm painting, I'm painting not by moving my brush over the miniature, but by painting tiny dots. Um, this makes the paint stick better to the miniature than if I would just move it and I have better control over it because I'm leaving dots of paint. The, when you're making smudges, then you have places where you left more paint and you have small amount of paint. But when you are painting tiny stripes or tiny dots, you, you leave a dot of paint. So you know that it's, there is the biggest amount of color is in the middle of this dot. And yeah, I'm painting thousands of them, thousands of them during painting like this, but I'm doing this quick, so it, that it's not really scary. It's just a different technique you need to learn how to move your wrist pretty fast, but it's, but it's not complicated. It, it's pretty easy and it's pretty, pretty comfortable and it's, and it gives you a very good uh, control over the paint and how it works. You really know where you left it. And when you paint really tiny dots and tiny straps, they are drying pretty quickly. Thanks to this, you can pretty easily create a new layer after new layer on the same details. It's like you go, for example, here, you start on, on painting this from the left side, you go to the right side painting the dots, and when you, and then when you finish with the right side, and you go back to the left side, it's already dried out. You can create another layer of dots, and you go like this, back and forth, back and forth, and you can, in this way, change uh, color of the whole detail pretty quickly and easily. And also, uh, you are creating structure on the cloth what makes it look more realistic. And now I finally am painting these reflections that I told you on the vertical uh, stripes of steel. And don't you think that it looks more realistic now? I, I think it does. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, much better, much better in my opinion. It looks much better now. And look, this is how he looks at this point. There is one problem with uh, light reflecting in a few dark places on the red cloth, but it looks pretty good all in all. And this is the basically final part of all of this. So I'm painting the gloves. Uh, so yeah, I'm painting the gloves with uh, chocolate brown. Now I highlight the chocolate brown with silver gray and I paint a reflection on it because if these gloves are made of a letter, it still have places where it's, or the stripe, it still have places where it reflects light because everything reflects light. Everything that we can see, we can see because it reflects light to us. Only things are reflecting lights in a bit different intensity. 
So still on this kind of glove, you need to have shadows and reflections. They will be just more flat and less contrastful. So you can go paint it gradually. And this is a leather, I guess, belt that holds his armor and gloves together. So I paint it by painting vertical stripes with brighter color. Uh, thanks to this, it looks like it's a bit cracked. Now a few reflections on the legs. Okay. And now the very interesting part. Rust wash from Vallejo. Or Vallejo. I have no idea how to pronounce it. You can write to me in the comment section. How do you pronounce this company name when you are, for example, from US? Because I know people from Spain are calling it, calling it Vallejo. What's the right name? I, maybe Vallejo. Okay, so anyway, mm, I just soaked my brush in this, in this really great wash. And I'm covering metal elements with it but not everything that's that's the thing try to once again be chaotic because when you will paint everything with it everything will be just brown and rust doesn't work like this it will work in a more chaotic ways some details will be more rusty and some will be not as rusty as the rest of them so try to be chaotic, make spots with it, make places that are more brown and places that are less brown. And yeah, try to apply smaller amounts of it. Don't, don't, don't uh, make flood with this wash. Apply it in more technical way. I like to place this color in rather in shades than in reflections because I, if you place it on in reflections you will make the contrast smaller here goes another layer and it will make it more flat Oops. I just prefer more reflections and as you can see now I'm moving I'm not only applying but I'm moving with the tip of my brush this wash more into the uh, shaded parts of this case uh, uh, into the top parts of them so they can go gradually be brighter and brighter the, the more they go away from the place where one scale goes on another hmm. yeah just just and I would recommend you to choose like a few scales that you will make very rusty and brown, a few scales that you will leave clean, completely clean, and a few scales that will be in between these two styles, just a little bit brown. Thanks to this, you will now have not only uh, scales that are uh, diff bright in a different way, but also different level of being rusty and I think that this will make it look really cool and interesting because thanks to this we have three different brightnesses and three different levels of being rusty and this I think will make it look really interesting I personally like the effect mm, keep in mind that you can also just mix some orange and brown paint instead of using this wash but if you just don't have it it's just a really highly diluted paint probably but I like it I like this specific wash and I like the effect that I can achieve with it as you can see uh, this is what we created today what I created today for you so rusty NMM red cloth the f a few ideas about painting non-metallics and how to apply rust uh, I like this what I created today 
uh, I will make of course the second video on which I will finish the rest so I, the next one will be obviously quicker because most is already painted so yeah I thought that this is going to be quicker but I'm pretty happy with my speed and what I achieved here so I hope you enjoy this video tutorial and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to don't miss the latest videos and thank you for your support on Patreon and see you on the next one. Bye!